Hey, what's up interwebs? I'm that toy guy and today we're going to be taking a look at the Make Toys Cross Dimensions Rider Despatron. So here it is and this is more like an early birthday present to myself because my birthday is at the end of this week. And so my parents bought me this and I love it so much. This is a really good figure. First, we'll take a look at the box here. See the very nice picture there of Rider Despatron and his like anime style Gundam-esque stance going on there. You got his name at the bottom, you got the Make Toys logo. This side of the box you have the gun, on this side you have more Despatron. On the back you have some really nice poses and product shots of the figure along with the profile which I can't read. If someone can read that for me that'd be great. You have a lot of kanji down the sides of the box here. Says cross dimensions on top, don't warning on the bottom. That's about it for the box. I'm not gonna slap it because it's a good box. So here is the toy Rider Despatron, and this thing is amazing. It's expensive, I will say that. I mean, to the average Canadian, I bought this off of ages3andup.com, and with shipping and tax and the exchange rate, it cost me $130. So Ugh. This is quite pricey, this thing, but it is worth it. It is very worth it. So just get up close here so you can see what this looks like. Got a lot of nice red and gold going on here. This is painted silver, and this is cast in a silver-like plastic, so there's going to be some differences, but I kind of like that difference. It's pretty cool. You got some more red, some more gold. You got these little rockets here. They're more meant for robot mode. You got some more gold there. On the front you have some dark-ish gray painted in the barrels there. Now the scope does have translucent purple on the front and on the back, but you can't really see through it because there's black plastic behind it and a sword. So yeah, there's a sword there. Now, what else comes in the box? You get your full color instructions, which are very helpful. I do like that. And then you get Two collector's cards. The card sleeves are not included. I bought these. But yeah, two collector's cards. You get his card and Striker Manus' card for some reason. And they do have the AR codes on the back. So I'm going to show that off right now. But the quality is going to change in this video because, just for this part, because I use my phone now to film this. I have a Google Pixel and I love the camera on that thing. But in order to use the app, I need to use the Google Pixel. So. I'm going to go back to the old camera for like a few minutes, so hopefully this works. So hopefully this works, I just switched cameras. So what you want to do is you want to get the Make Toys app open. You want to go up here to the little thing and click on Augmented Reality. Now let's start with the Rider Despatron's card first. So you just get rid of that. You want to place your phone there and there you go. Now you have Rider Despatron. Now there's three different versions of this Rider Despatron on the app. There's this one where his shoulders are moving like he's breathing. There's the stock still version. Then you tap it again. There's his gun mode. And this is really cool. Oh, there's a gun. There you go. This is really cool. But if you have Striker Manus, you already know how this card works. This is the card you want. You want to see Thunder Manus. Now. There's Thunder Manus. He's quite big. That is nice. Now, there's four versions of Thunder Manus on here. There's Thunder Manus' robot mode. There's Thunder Manus' truck mode. Then there's the God Bomber on Thunder Manus' robot mode. Then there's the God Bomber on the back of Thunder Manus' vehicle mode. And that's basically how these AR cards work. So. Let's switch back to a higher quality camera, shall we? So, bringing Ryder Despatron back in here. I just switched back to the, the better of the two cameras. This is a really nice gun mode. Now, I'm, I'm really tall, so my hands are really big. And this doesn't fit in my hands very well. Like My pinky just kind of like doesn't work here. But for the average size human being, this would fit perfectly fine in an, in an adult's hand. Now it does have a spring-loaded trigger, so 
That's nice. I wish this stuck out a bit more, but I can understand why they didn't do that for robot mode. But yeah, overall, that's about it, really, for gun mode. There's not much else you can do with it. So, let's transform this guy. So, first thing you want to do is remove the, the sight off the top. Take that, just put that off to the side. Take this little hinge here and fold that out, just like so. I forgot to do something. Hold on. I forgot to do something important. Something very important. That's what he's like next to a modern day deluxe. Now that the important thing's done out of the way, you just want to then bring this section out. And you want to take these side panels here and unfurl them out of these little holes that they're in. Then you want to take this entire top section and separate it from the bottom, just like so, without, you know, gumming up the leg. Come on, leg. Come on, leg. There we go. And you want to take this, fold it out, just like so. Those will become his arms later. You want to bring this section up. First, before you bring it up all the way, you want to open these two panels here and pull out his head. Then fold this the rest of the way and clip it in. Fold that chest plate up, fold these two chest plates over. There you have his chest all done. Now what you want to do is you want to take the waist and you want to rotate it 180, or not 180, 90 degrees. I know my degrees. And you want to unfold these sections here, bring the foot down, then unfold them the rest of the way, rotate foot, close his panels up, then just take this and bend it down like so. Pull. Now what you want to do, this is on a spring, so you want to pull, twist, and let go. That'll rotate the leg and orient it properly. And you want to pull that down. And just make sure you get this ratchet, this little joint here, all the way to the end. So you just click it once, click it twice, and then click it a third time. And there you go, now it's flattened out. And rotate at the thigh swivel. You want to take this leg, bring it down, and rotate it forward, unfold the foot. Now he is standing, and you want to raise your camera so that your viewers can see what you're doing. Make sure your camera is staying in its tripod, it's falling out. There you go. Now what you want to do is you want to bring these, well, get this thing out of the way, bring these down, fold this back, and then this little bit here will fold into that hole there. So just fold those in. Come on. Come on, there we go. Then you want to take the shoulder pads and bring it up. They're on double hinges on the inside. Now he has two giant arm cannons. This is one of the configurations you can do with this toy. I don't like it, so I'm gonna move on. With the most strength you possibly have, pull this out, pull out the fist, slide that off, fold this back, and then close it over the fist. Ugh. And you have to make sure, uh, you have to make sure that that little tab right there goes into that slot. And that can be very hard to line up sometimes. So you just, there we go. Just click that into place. And do the same thing on this side that off, pull that down, bring up the fist, close that up, then this thing here you want to unfurl it, then you just want to rotate this around like so, and then that tab will tab into that slot right there. Some banging noise outside. And there you have him in his robot mode. Now. You take these, and you slide them onto the top here, and the top here. And you take the fusion cannon, you plug it on the top there, you can get it on. And now he is all fully G1'd up and ready to kill some good guys. There you have, why is he off balance? He seems a tad off balance. Why are you a tad off balance? 
All the legs are done properly. Oh, there. There you go. Now he's good. There you have Ryder Despotron in his robot mode. And he's really, really tall, actually. He's quite, quite tall. He's... Here he is next to MPP10, or MP10V, sorry. Let's give you a sense of scale there. He's taller than the knockoff masterpiece. And the knockoff masterpiece is about Voyager scale. Here's a Voyager class figure. A very short Voyager class fig figure. But a Voyager nonetheless. That's basically how tall most modern day Voyagers are now. So, yeah, he's quite tall. I'm just getting my deluxe here transformed very carefully. Here he is next to a modern day deluxe. You can see he's quite he's quite tall. He's quite up there. Now, his articulation is also up there, being part of the cross dimensions line. If you guys have seen what Striker Manus's articulation like, this guy is almost identical. He is lacking a lot of points that Striker Manus had, but Striker Manus, sorry, but Ryder Despotron here, I got their names mixed up, is still really really good. So the head is on a ball joint, so you can get a lot of nice movement there. He's also on a disc hinge, like most six inch Marvel Legends and things like that. So that's really nice. He does have full 360 degree rotation at the shoulder. They can go out about that far. Then you can lift this extra panel up here and then go out even further. And then even if you want to go even more, you can unfurl that piece there and it'll go out even further, which is nice. Just close all this back up. He does have a bicep swivel. He does bend at the elbow. Single jointed elbow that bends all the way. Elbow is a little low though, but oh well. You do have wrist rotation. The hands can open and close. You do have the three finger trigger finger split going on there. He has a waist joint and he also has a very slight ab crunch, but it does accomplish a lot. And if you want to go even more of an ab crunch, you can unpeg this from the back back and then if I can get it, there you go. You can, this whole like double hinge section here, you can unpeg that a little bit to give yourself even more of an ab crunch, which I do quite appreciate a lot. Just get all that peg back in. So yeah. Now these skirt armor pieces can move out of the way to accommodate both the front and the back. My back ones are a little loose, but oh well. Legs can go forward that far and they can go back that much. Now, people are complaining how they can only go forward that much. Well, I love how both legs have this spring-loaded thing in there because you can do this. If you want to make the leg go up further, rotate the thigh swivel, pull the leg down. Now there's another notch right there on the front. Let go of the leg and it'll lock in place. And then you can move the leg forward all the way. I think that's really cool. I kind of feel like that was intentional to give us the spring-loaded thing on both legs so that we can do that, because both legs do that. But really, logically, only this leg needs that spring-loaded thing for the transformation. So I feel like that's intentional, so I do quite like that a lot. That's a good job on Make Toys' part. Knees, double-jointed, so they can bend all the way. And the feet can go down, they can go up, they can spin side to side. You can move these out of the way to get even more of a spin if you want. The toes can point down, the heels can point down, and he has ankle tilt, which is probably what I'd say one of the most important points of articulation on a figure. If you want to get him into some nice dynamic poses, is a toe joint. Now, for accessories, he does come with a gray chest piece here. But I'm not taking it out of the box. Now, you guys, it's easy to tell what it is. It's just a great version of that. I'm not pulling it out of the box because I know for a fact that if I pull it out of the box, I'm going to lose it. So I'm not going to lose it. So I'm not going to pull it out of the box. But he does also come with, if you just open the front of the barrel up, the sword that falls out. This is what the sword looks like. A nice, nice looking hilt there. It's very simple, very basic, but I do quite like that. Then you have a very nice Energon sword coming out here. The same thing he used to try to kill Optimus with in the movie, I guess. But yeah, he can hold that. It just slots right in. There are two. There's like a track in his hand. 
and like a, a bit, I don't know what you'd call that, that slides into the track like that and he can hold the sword and it's very secure. Like it's, it's not falling out. So yeah, that is really cool. That's one of the accessories. Another one is when you open his chest up, you have his very evil looking matrix of leadership thing. Now I haven't read the Striker Manus comic. This guy didn't come with a comic. I know Striker Manus did. I haven't read it, so I don't know what this is actually called, but that's what it looks like there. It's nice and translucent purple, and he cannot hold this thing in his hand. I don't know if he can, like... No, he can't even hold it that way. He can't hold this thing in his hand, which is disappointing. That's my only major gripe with his figure, is I wish he could hold his Matrix of Leadership in his hand. But other than that, that's really all you get with this toy. So, just getting close here. Chest. Head, shaky camera, stupid rubber, there you go. That is a very cool Megatron head sculpt, very blurry Megatron head sculpt. Focus, there you go. That is a very nice Megatron head sculpt there. You got the classic bucket head going, you got some nice little crevices in there. They're not painted, but they do look black, which I really do like, and you have his red piercing eyes. You have some shoulder-mounted rockets. You got some very nice tech detail going on in the chest there. Some more detail in the crotch. You got some more gold. You got that same gold that you saw on the gun are now his knee hinges, which looks really, really cool. And I love the way that this looks down the leg here. All throughout this figure. It just looks really nice. Here's the fusion cannon. A lot of people say it is upside down. And to a G1 purist, it is upside down, but this is a different take on Megatron, so I'm fine with it being this way. Let's look at the back of the figure. The crotch is the same on both sides, like the front and the back, so it doesn't matter what side you have the trigger knee on. I just like it on this side because mine came packaged that way. But yeah, he is really, really cool. Now, let's just quickly get him into a pose here. Bear with me. We're posing him. See, this is where this extra twist piece will come in, to, come in handy is when you want to, like, bring his leg up that much. There you go. Now... One thing I have heard many people say about this toy, and I would agree with them, is this is what they should have looked like in the movies. Now, I don't have a movie Megatron to compare this to, but let's just bring in Movie Incinerator. This is what the movie toys ended up looking like. Weird and nothing like their original counterparts. Here's Sun's, Sunspot. Like, that doesn't look like... I think it was... Was it Sunstorm or Sunspot? I can't remember this guy's name or the G1 character's name, but this does not look anything like that, right? And people complained about that. Well, this, I feel like, has a very nice movie aesthetic to it with all the greveling and the, the lots of little bits and things that don't really make sense on a gun but are still there. And if they had made this guy... If they had made Megatron look like this in the movies, I feel like everyone else would have been happy. I mean, I would have been happy, but I'm still happy with the Megatron we got now, so. But yeah, I would say this guy looks a lot like a movie toy as well. And same with Striker Manus. Striker Manus makes more sense if he were to be like that in the movies. That would have been cool. I would have loved that. But overall, this figure is just amazing. It is really, really good looking. Its paint scheme is great. Its articulation is fantastic. Its transformation is awesome. His gun mode looks great. I really want them to release a stock or a barrel extension and a stock for the gun. That would be awesome. That would just complete the look. But overall, this figure on its own is great, and I would highly recommend you pick this up. And I would highly recommend you go in on this um, Cross Dimensions line. I hope they keep it up, because third-party companies tend to like have a line that they'll only that'll only last for like a few years, and then they'll cancel it. I want this one to stay and keep going, because I can see a lot of cool characters coming out of this, like. The Seekers, they would look cool in this design. The Dinobots, they would look awesome. The Wreckers, that would be cool. But yeah, these, this, this whole 
cross dimensions line is great and I, I I cannot wait to see what they bring in the future. So that has been my look at the Make Toys Cross Dimensions Rioter Despotron and I'm that toy guy and stay tuned for my next video.